Hi everybody. So I'm working on this uh, employment concept and trying to see uh, essentially what all the different kinds of job market opportunities there are, uh, both uh, in the United States and globally. And there's a lot of different data and a lot of different uh, kinds of information out there. But uh, basically, I started with uh, this guy here. Um, actually, I started with the uh, kind of this, uh, this page from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and they have uh, the, the occupational employment and wage estimates for the United States and you can sort this if you click up here you can sort it by total numbers of jobs and uh, even wage or annual wage um, so I kind of wanted to just see overall what was going on in the United States um, and then just discuss it. So I came up with this document here, and we're basically going to discuss all these things here in the document. Um, and starting with this one to kind of see uh, the monthly net wage. And you can kind of see here uh, that uh, Switzerland, United States, Australia, Denmark, Germany, Qatar, uh, Sweden, Finland, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Oman, Netherlands, Singapore, and so on, Canada, these guys are kind of in the top uh, group here uh, for, so you can kind of see right around here, Italy is kind of the last one um, in terms of uh, monthly uh, net wage. And you can kind of see that uh, it's nice to be above $2,000 per month in general, uh, but a lot of people are making significantly less than that. Um, so in the world total, there's about 200 or so countries, and you can see uh, this is about uh, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 70 or so of those. Um, so you can see quite a lot of places are making uh, very little. Um, and um, so this data is right here. You can uh, kind of go through it and look at it, and they have the uh, local currency and then the estimated currency in dollars. So you see that uh, Switzerland is making quite a lot more. So uh, what I did here is looked up uh, economy of Switzerland. So you can kind of see, and if you're familiar with the economy of Switzerland, it is pretty heavy in banking, but you can see quite a lot in the services sector. Uh, sounds like we got a fire department going off in the background here. You can see that uh, I was surprised at how much of Switzerland's uh, export partners is actually going with Germany and even on import as well. So, uh, but you might want to look at each one of these uh, carefully to kind of see. Sorry, there's a fire department. We've had a lot of fires in the area recently. Just pause the video for a second. All right, it's interesting to hear. Okay. Basically, going by with the fire truck. So, uh, but yeah, so there's there's a lot of little details in here. I would say, in particular interest is that quite a number of these top ones uh, are in Arabia. Um, you can see that. Uh, Probably the oil industry is making quite a lot of money here. Um, Australia would be another one to look up. Um, and you can see Australia and uh, see what's going on. And then down here, you can kind of select your and click on the economy. And you can kind of see um, what the economy of Australia looks like. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, but what I also did is took a look at the uh, Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity. And so since the United States is pretty big, um, you can kind of see that um, the services industry in recent years has really become a major part of our economy. Wow, we we're just getting tons of fire. So anyway, I really wanted to do this outside uh, because it just feels way nicer to work on this project outside. 
So you can see, uh, you can basically select uh, which country ends. If I did the United States here, United States, you're gonna see it will load up, and you can kind of see quite a lot of uh, services in that is actually in part uh, tourism is actually quite big uh, for the United States. Um, and you can see uh, machinery here, and then you can see materials like plastics. Uh, this is kind of the uh, foods, and then you have minerals, and electrical machinery, and so on. Uh, so uh, next we have here uh, global city. So I really like this one a lot. Um, what you can do is you can click on this, and then uh, you can go to open source, and it'll take a little, just a moment to open up the source here, and it'll take you to the graph um, for this. And, uh, sorry, it just takes a little moment to load here. Um, and uh, what I noticed here is uh, per capita income. So San Francisco is uh, quite huge. Um, and you can see a lot of these uh, American cities are in the top, uh, you know, 10 or even 50 or so. Um, but you can see Paris, um, some other ones you might not have been familiar with. Uh, Zurich, Oslo, and so on. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, I was pretty, uh, pretty happy that San Francisco is... Uh, in the United States, so we can basically uh, check this out as well as Seattle, Boston, and New York. Um, so these are all great cities uh, in terms of per capita income. Um, so that's this graph here. Um, now, there are metropolitan areas, um, so you can take a look at this as well. Um, and uh, you know, of these metropolitan areas, um, you can kind of see here, so there's San Jose, uh, San Francisco, it kind of breaks it down. And of course, uh, San Jose is quite a bit different in terms of uh, the income. So, uh, but here you can see in detail. So, you know, these, these, are, these are just for the United States, but you can see quite a number above, uh, say, $50,000 per year. Um, now, these numbers did not quite add up. If you do the average, um, so you can see the average mean wage is about 56000 So I'm not sure if these numbers are absolutely correct or not. I know quite a number of people that are not making uh, $56,000 a year. Um, and the median wage of $20 to uh, mean wage. So the median is just a typical amount with uh, the population. So you can see uh, there is quite a bias towards the high end in terms of money. Um, and you can see here, I, I was kind of trying to see, you know, essentially what's going on uh, for each one of these cities. So you can see Boston, uh, Iowa here, and uh, Washington, uh, as well as New York. So, and then Boulder, Napa, California, and uh, Los Angeles, so on. So this is kind of some details. Uh, you could also, this can also be edited to do uh, by the log graph, and then you can kind of see a little bit more detail sometimes. Uh, there's a kind of a drop off here right after Minneapolis. Um, so these these kind of top half would be important to look at. You can really see that, you can kind of see it here. It looks like uh, Honolulu is kind of that. There's these little, drops here that are important to see. So um, now uh, this is the whole graph of all of them. So you can kind of see how this, uh, all the cities, so you can kind of see that, you know, right around here, uh, there is quite a difference. So these maps um, are some of my favorite because they show uh, the little zones where you can see kind of the wealth map. Um, uh, the East Coast in general has quite a lot of wealth right in through here, kind of spawning off through New York and actually going down into here, which is uh, Washington, D.C. This is pretty surprising. Up here, you can see quite a lot of wealth here um, in uh, North Dakota, as well as uh, kind of uh, 
uh, Wyoming here, and then you can see kind of San Francisco Bay Area heading out to Sacramento. And then down south, you can kind of see also uh, the uh, San Diego and Los Angeles, as well as Seattle. And then in here, you can see some things in Texas and uh, Florida being pretty wealthy, actually, and actually kind of biased on the West Coast. Kind of a more detailed chart here. You can see specifics uh, for uh, annual salaries. And then you can see the, uh, just the coloring kind of makes it a little easier to see. Um, this is available on Wikipedia. I'll show the links for this later. I think I have the link on this. You can just click on this here for that link. And hopefully this one has that link too. So uh, now, uh, metropolitan area, so you can kind of see um, this was sorted by, I believe, uh, population. So you can see New York, although the population... They're actually, because the population is so significant in New York, this is the second largest city, then Los Angeles, then Dallas, Philadelphia, and so on. It actually isn't until you get to uh, Washington, D.C. here. And I can open up the chart source so you can see this. And okay, this will load up in a second. Um, but um, while this loads, we can take a look um, here. So. You see there's just a couple cities in here. This is San Jose. And right around here is probably Seattle. And this one is San Francisco. So just a few cities here, but you know, with the population being so huge in some of these areas. Um, so you can see this is uh, Washington, D.C. This is San Francisco. Seattle, Minneapolis, Denver. Baltimore, and then a little Portland spot here, and San Jose, Santa Clara, Sunnyvale. So uh, this really surprised me because I was like, oh, Washington, D.C. So it kind of gives you the perspective that uh, government jobs in general are looking pretty good overall. Um, and then you can see San Jose and San Francisco being slightly different. Uh, now this is per capita, so it's not for particular industries. And now this is sorted by wealth. So you can see the top ones all kind of, and I think I just have the graph here somewhere. Yeah, put that graph. There you go. Yeah, so this is the graph here. Um, you just gotta scroll around a little bit and you can see that there's definitely a drop off right here in uh, New York and then after that, Atlanta so these and there's just a significant drop all the way down so I think I can even do this on a log graph here I can follow this up as a log graph and it is a log graph so uh, that's the regular graph you can kind of see I'll just leave it as a regular graph that's even makes more sense you can kind of see it flattening out here uh, pretty much a typical income of about 25,000 so that's where I'm really confused because the numbers here say that the average is about 56, but you know, so basically what happens here is in urban areas, there's a lot of poor people. Um, and that actually means that suburban and rural people are making actually significantly more money um, in some senses. So you can see even in Washington DC here, the average is 47,000, but um, the countrywide average is 56,000. So perhaps that suggests uh, some different numbers, um, but I don't really even know what to say about that. So, um, you know, again, annual income by country, um, you see that uh, Australia, you know, the United States here uh, is, uh, you know, these, these go down to Mexico here and so on. So um, and uh, I think I got the link here. Let's just open that source up because uh, we'd like to take a look at that carefully. I think that's part of a chart I already loaded. So, uh, and uh, it's still loading. Sorry about this. So, all these charts kind of. Where did I put this guy? Anyway, so it's taking a lot of load. Um, I should even try to close some of these out. Let's 
close some of these out to speed this up a little bit. So here's by country again, but you know this this graph I actually like a lot because it kind of shows annual income, um, and you can see, uh, you know, basically uh, again this shows kind of a rural bias. Um, Australia being, you know, there's a lot of uh, not, not not a whole lot of people in Netherlands, New Zealand, Ireland. Uh, Ireland actually is pretty dense in terms of population. Belgium. United Kingdom and so on, but uh, Canada here being uh, significantly more uh, than the United States. And uh, this is the graph here. So I think on the right, or where did I put this? Yes, yeah, so here's the actual data. So you can see uh, that, uh, so you can see the annual income, hourly income. And uh, this is different for different years as well. So. I think I took the latest for this particular one. So, uh, but here down in Mexico, around two thousand um, dollars, and it says fifteen thousand dollars. So you know these numbers uh, just do not match up with uh, the uh, data. And I would say fifteen thousand dollars seems about uh, correct. Um, and I think this is more based on uh, what is this data from? Let's go to the top here. Uh, so this is probably a different company doing this uh, data here. So, uh, and sometimes maybe the private data is better. So basically these are the numbers for uh, the population in general, at least according to the uh, labor statistics. Um, so basically what I did is I went in and uh, looked at the uh, details by occupation. So, uh, so again, what I would say is that if you're looking for global numbers, you should really go to this Atlas of Economic Complexity and then kind of break it down into industry. So I looked at exports here, um, and that is imports is not really where the job market is. So you want to focus on exports, and you can click here at exports or imports, and you can also click on this to see where. We are exporting too. So if you wanted a job in the United States, you could probably get a job with uh, Brazil, with China. You know, there's also some opportunities with Germany, and of course a big opportunity with Canada. So of these, you could say probably uh, Canada and Mexico are the best options uh, for international work uh, with the United States. And you just have to look through the numbers here to see with uh, you know the kingdom being very big here. And Germany being big, and actually uh, China being pretty big as well. So, but basically, when you compare the opportunities in China versus Canada, you'd have to say this would be way better for uh, the uh, to go with China. So, excuse me, to go with Canada. So, uh, and then if you want to do, uh, if you're from say China, um, you can also see where your opportunities are here and. Obviously, there are going to be a lot of opportunities with the United States. Um, for some reason, the hover over isn't really working there. But uh, and you can see uh, some opportunities here, uh, and you just have to compare. So, but what I would say is, if you're uh, probably looking at this from the United States, uh, the best way is to look at the tree map, and you can also narrow this down uh, by your job type. So, if you're interested, looks like most people probably going to be involved in the services industry. Um, and then you also have to specify a two-digit code if you want to really see the details, or you can even do a one-digit code to kind of get the overall uh, perspective. So services, machinery, chemicals, minerals, agriculture, electronics, vehicles, and so on. Um, so basically, uh, the two biggest ones are machinery and services. Um, chemicals and minerals and agriculture. Um, so no matter what this data says, kind of rely on both. Um, and then this can kind of give you some idea. So basically what I did, I sorted this by, uh, so I took, I took this data, kind of selected it all, added it into a spreadsheet, and then sorted it by employment type. So you can see office and administrative support, sales related occupations, and so on. So you can see sales related, but this shows you by most types of jobs. So 
most people are doing either office, sales, transportation, or food. And that is about $20 an hour. Um, and then you get kind of a, a gap up here with uh, production occupation. So when you're making something, um, that goes way up, basically. Um, and then you kind of uh, library instruction, and you can see business and financial and, uh, management occupations actually being slightly less than production occupations and retail sales. I'm not even sure this data might be wrong. Let me make sure that I got this correct. So, so this. Um, so that's probably what I did right here, and I just need to do, I messed this up a little bit, so I gotta do this guy. So it should show the correct numbers now. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so basically, sorry about that. So all these numbers were wrong. So basically, um, yeah, so you could see uh, basically healthcare purchase. So everything we just talked about was completely wrong. So all occupations average is about $27. And then you can see office, and then actually food preparation being dropping quite a bit down. So uh, healthcare being kind of your first major one that really increased it up to like $40 an hour. Um, and then you can see business and financial operations and then management. And then other ones here, healthcare diagnosing, computer mathematical operations, computers, registered nurses, uh, financial specialists, top executives, other management, global operations managers, operations specialists, software developers. So, but this is again by number of jobs. So basically um, the top job here is about $20 an hour. Sales also being about 22, uh, food preparation and healthcare. So basically you could say uh, you know, based on this, healthcare is probably your number one job in terms of money, and then also uh, management and uh, business and financial operations. So, uh, hopefully, that explains that graph. Uh, I'm going to update this graph here because it was wrong. Um, same data, but uh, basically slightly different. Yeah, I just shifted. So. Here is a histogram of the hourly pay, so you can kind of see um, there is actually a nice little bias here towards the upper end. So you can see at twenty-three dollars an hour, up to thirty dollars an hour. So you can see that that actually is quite good. So that there is a tendency to get people paid a little bit more, um, but then a steep drop off in pay right here, and then a steep increase. So if you can get paid above sixteen dollars an hour, you're probably on good side of this histogram, um, which is basically $15, $16 an hour. Um, and then you can see quite a steep drop off after $30 an hour. So basically uh, it being very hard to get paid more than $30 an hour. And then kind of a drop here, sudden drop, where if you're basically in this management sector, perhaps, um, and then you get like $50 an hour, $55 an hour, and then all of a sudden just a huge gap here, and then money on um, and so it's best to just see if you can skip that. Um, now, again, uh, let me see if I can open this source. So there's different versions of how we calculated this. Um, and it's going to take a moment just to load all this data. Sorry about this. Um, so these are some of the other statistics you can see by statistics by territory if you wanted to do the state. You see, um, let's just load this up really quick while this other graph is loading. You kind of see major states here um, where the income is great, right? So interestingly, you can see uh, kind of uh, along the East Coast here, um, up here in Minnesota, California, and actually surprisingly a little bit less here in Washington. Um, but that's a good overview. I'm still trying to load this image here. And... I think this is the annual salaries we got here, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so you can see annually uh, management being pretty good. I think this was, what was this? This one was, 
I don't know, my computer's kind of slow right now. I have to, uh, oh, well, my battery just. Alright, I'm gonna pause this really quick, guys. Okay, well, anyway, so just a little bit of battery problem here. Um, so basically, you can see the rest of this uh, details here. So all of these um, are some of the top ones, but you might find some uh, particular ones kind of in the middle here. Um, and obviously, pay is not everything. Um, so um, we're gonna hear some exports. Um, this is another graph you might be interested. in. In from the Atlas of Economic Complexity. If you look at the global share, you can kind of see um, where the future might be. Um, so you can kind of see right in here, mineral, minerals being uh, kind of the only area really that is increasing, as well as textiles. So clothing, um, actually just having a slight increase over the years. Um, my brother happens to be involved in that. Um, and uh, I think this one is a uh, stone. So uh, certain areas uh, being just slightly interesting. Take a look at. Um, so if you have any of those industries, you might uh, be interested. Uh, major employment groups. So these are the major employment groups. You can kind of see uh, numbers of people. So basically office. Transportation and sales uh, being the top, and then right in here, you have food preparation. Um, so these are the not necessarily the most paying, but uh, jobs are in here again. You have services, um, number employed, and then you can see sales, transportation, food, and so on. With uh, after management, uh, healthcare actually being less, which is interesting. Um, and uh, if you take the, if you multiply the salary times the employment number of employees, you can get this graph, which is kind of interesting. So you can see in terms of uh, basic, oh no, this is just the daily pay. Okay, here's a histogram showing the daily pay. Um, and uh, you kind of see a drop off after about $70,000. Um, and uh, I think that's just about it. That I'm going to talk about, you can see more of this employment uh, top paying job by salary. Um, and I think I just sorted these different kinds of ways so you can kind of see um, essentially what's going on. Um, so, what you might like to do is take a look at a particular uh, industry um, from this. So, Click on one of these, you can get to a graph that looks like this, um, and then you can see where the areas are. Meanwhile, so in general, you can see education is kind of an East Coast industry, and most of the money is being paid there. But there's certain little pockets in here uh, that look pretty good, and actually, California is looking pretty good in general um, in terms of employment. Uh, and then you can kind of see uh, certain towns. So, for example, uh, New York, uh, Virginia, and uh, New York City being pretty good for uh, uh, Boston, Cambridge, and so on. So, here's another example of administrative supports. So you can kind of see um, that uh, California has kind of got that whole area cornered in Washington. Uh, there's a couple pockets in here. So, if you're looking for office types of work, and then you can see healthcare again, kind of a hole here for healthcare as opposed to here. So, you see a lot of or a lot of healthcare jobs basically on the west coast, um, and then some in here. So, basically, most of the money here actually on the west coast, and you see that's quite a lot. The healthcare practitioners being eighty-six thousand dollars to even hundred it. So, so this includes doctors and some other things. And then this is the mean wage. Um, see again the West Coast with even Nevada starting to show up here. And I think does Nevada show up there? Not really. So uh, and uh, you can see New York and so on. So and actually Alaska being pretty good as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, now here's more office jobs. So you can see again these states kind of being the main ones with Colorado. 
Um, and for mathematics, uh, you can kind of see uh, a little sliver here through, uh, this would probably be Reno uh, in Nevada, just off uh, California. And you can kind of see all these little pockets. You'd have to really look at that details there. And I think um, computer and technical, I, this is like where the jobs are in terms of technology. Uh, so you can kind of see as a percentage um, relative to all the other jobs. Uh, so, uh, and then management jobs, you can kind of see uh, Southern California kind of uh, getting into there as well as Colorado. And uh, kind of some pockets all throughout here. Um, this would have to be studied in detail. So, and then management jobs in general, San Jose being one of the best, uh, Connecticut, which is kind of a law place, New York, San Francisco being quite a bit different than San Jose, which is uh, an important point to think about, Boulder, Colorado, but these are the highest paying ones. Uh, and then other sort of general the states you can see here, uh, Virginia, Massachusetts, Vermont, uh, so on. Um, but uh, well, it's really centered around uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, also New York City. Um, and uh, that should make sense because uh, the capital is in Washington, D.C. and the United Nations is also in the stock market and things like that. So, but on sales jobs, maybe slightly different. I think I got a link in here, but I got the link somewhere. So, oh, sorry. So these are sales-related occupations. You can see sales, again, being the East Coast, but also California and Washington um, as well. Um, and, uh, and you know, just so uh, now, transportation was a huge one. Um, I was actually really interested in transportation business and kind of see uh, some of that being actually kind of biased up into here, Montana, North Dakota, and so on. Uh, for a lot of people involved in transportation. Um, and actually, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of little nice land, uh, trees, and some other things. But you have to be transportation industries. Um, so that is about it. Um, again, you can look through the Wikipedia articles um, to give you some of this kind of data. Um, they got some maps and some data. You can grab it yourself, or I'll leave a link. To all of this, um, this is countries by average wage. Um, this is kind of your general human development index, um, which is good for uh, thinking about where the job market and kind of the development is most advanced. You can see here, we didn't really talk about it a whole lot, but again, Australia was more actually one of the better places, and New Zealand. Um, you can see Japan here, um, Chile. Uh, some problems here in Africa, but at least you can know where the problems are. Actually, South Africa and North Africa being okay, but uh, actually India being uh, struggling there. Um, and then the total wealth, so you can just see it here, China, essentially, if you really want money, you gotta work with China and the United States, as well as Canada, Russia, Australia, some other ones like that. Um, and then unemployment, so you can see if you're looking for a job, uh, basically China and Brazil and Australia are pretty good. Uh, Mexico, a lot of people have jobs. And then if, uh, actually, this is an interesting thing. So you have Eastern Europe, which is actually typically poorer, but actually the unemployment is less. Actually, uh, India being relatively high, uh, but not as high as the Middle East. And some other areas really struggling, um, but basically unemployment here uh, being pretty bad in some areas. So, uh, so you know, if you're looking for work, you want to be in an area that's high. So, uh, and actually, particularly important would be Norway um, with lots of work there. Um, and then GDP per capita. So basically, um, here, you know, you basically want to be in the green areas. So, uh, United States being basically the best, um, and followed by Canada. So, really, not only employment, but you also want to have 
IGP capita, and you see uh, Canada basically being as good as Europe, so might as well even work in Canada. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities there in Australia. So if you're in the United States and you don't want to work in the United States, but outside of the United States, basically Australia, New Zealand, Europe, and Canada, um, and then Japan here, and then actually we saw uh, some in the Middle East, a little sliver here. Uh, so that's a general overview map of what we should be looking at. Um, and sometimes there's maybe opportunities in Africa that we're not aware of, like uh, right in here we can see. Here. Um, anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this study. It's uh, helped me understand quite a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, take a look at uh, maps and uh, try to see the entire Earth. Um, and, uh, you know, really, when it comes to the Earth, um, I've actually been looking at the North Pole and the South Pole as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just so many different opportunities. It's hard to imagine that, uh, you know, the United States, uh, you know, like we saw a lot of opportunities in California and in the West Coast, but this is quite dry, uh, bad land and through here. Um, and, uh, but so it's really just changes a lot uh, depending on what you're looking for in terms of your uh, job market. And here you can see Australia is a good market, but why is this land so bad here? Um, so uh, anyway, so there's a lot of different uh, perspectives and uh, thoughts on what makes a good job or uh, the future of kind of like work on Earth. Um, so uh, let me know what you think, if you got some ideas, suggestions, other data that you think is for me to look at. Glad to take a look at it uh, with you, discuss it with you, and uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks.